Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 2nd December 2017. I am Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's topics, as usual, we will study oil and gold using Q charts. Then we will look at broad market analysis. We will study that using indices, internals and then also using broad market ETFs. We will look at sector and industry analysis using performance graph, ranking and heat map table. Along the way we may review some of the trades posted in our traders community and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel. I will try to answer them as I go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Now we move to the actual system. We are looking at US oil, the oil ETF using Q hop on template. This template lets us decide if there is a valid trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart. If you are following these weekly market roundups regularly, then you know that our last optimal long entry signal for US oil came on this cyan color candle. Partial profit for swing traders could be booked at the upper boundary and if stock was moved to the swing low here, then the remaining position may still be held. As US oil has made another swing low, for the remaining position, the stop below swing low may be moved to this position. At the right edge of the chart, the candle shape is indecisive, the candle color is bullish, that is cyan. This does not meet the checklist conditions for any of the standard trade setups, so there is no valid entry at the right edge of the chart. Those who entered the long position on this candle may continue to hold the position with the stop just below this swing low. We are now looking at gold using the GLD gold ETF and we are looking at it using Q hop on template. Our last swing long entry position on gold was on this cyan candle. At that time, the stop would be just below the recent low. Partial profit could be booked by fast traders on this cyan candle, where more than the risk distance was covered. If profit was not booked, then the entire position is still being held following Q discipline trading. It didn't hit the upper boundary. So the usual profit target was not hit and it also didn't hit the stop loss point. Where is the stop loss point? We may decide that using the protection signal that is available in Q hop off template. 
when we change the template to Q hop off template, we can decide the position of the initial stop loss using the Q protection signal. Our entry was on this candle. At that time, the protection signal was at this level. So this would be the level of the initial stop loss. We can see that at the right edge of the chart that stop loss has yet not been hit. So one may continue to hold the position following discipline. It may either go up next week and hopefully hit the upper boundary, the profit target or if it hits the stop loss it will exit with small stop as per our plan when we entered the trade. Every week we study the broad market in terms of NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index both using weekly charts. Because this study is using broad indices and weekly charts it is to be used for longer term investment decisions. It is not to be used for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. Both the NASDAQ and NYSE composite indices continue to be in strong uptrend. Both are overbought as can be seen from the dots appearing on top of the candles. The NASDAQ composite index could not make a new all-time high this week. Its traffic light candle color turned yellow that is neutral. On the other hand, NYSE composite index made a new all-time high. Its candle shape is hollow bullish and the color is also cyan that is bullish. The internals over longer term continue to be weak. They are not able to surpass previous peaks. For this specific week, we see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 internals went down. Only one internal went up. However, 3 of the NYSC internals and 1 of the NASDAQ internal closed in the positive. Two other NASDAQ internals close negative. In summary, we may conclude that the broad market indices are clearly in uptrend in longer term weekly charts. The internals continue to be weak over longer term, not able to surpass previous peaks, and internals for this specific week is neutral. We are now studying the broad market using broad market ETFs. We start with SPY. On the left hand side we are studying SPY using weekly backdrop template. And on the right hand side we are looking at SPY using daily hop on template. In the weekly chart SPY went up sharply with very heavy activity and made a new all-time high. In the daily chart, it closed above the upper boundary that is too far away on the upper side for us to take a low risk long entry. SPY has made new high and therefore it is in uptrend. For many weeks in the recent past, QQQ was outperforming other ETFs. That changed this week. QQQ declined and in the weekly chart the backdrop candle color turned magenta, that is bearish. It has also displayed a bear release signal, the magenta star appearing on top of the candle. Activity was very heavy in QQQ. 
In the daily chart, we see that there was a bearish headwind a few days ago. After that, price tried to go up but failed. At the right edge, price bounced up from the memory support line. Because there is a memory support nearby, we are not going to attempt any short trade. The candle flow color is magenta that is bearish in the daily chart. Therefore, we are not going to take any long trade either. We are now looking at DIA. Just like SPY, in the weekly chart, DIA went up sharply. It is overbought as we can see from the dot appearing on top of the weekly candle. It went up with very heavy activity. In the daily chart, it closed well above the upper boundary that is too far away for us to take any long trade. Now we have a look at IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF. This also made a new all-time high in the weekly chart, though the candle shape is somewhat indecisive. It has a hollow body, a lower tail, but it has an upper tail as well. The candle color is bullish in the weekly chart, cyan. IWM, like the other three broad market ETFs, also went up with very heavy activity. In the daily chart, IWM went straight up from near lower boundary to upper boundary. We call this kind of moves wild swings. That means there is no clear direction. That is IWM is neither having higher high, higher low, nor is it having lower high, lower low. These are uncertain movement areas. For swing trading, we prefer to stay away from new trade entry during such wild swing moves. Overall, from the broad market indices analysis and from the broad market ETF analysis, we can see that the market is clearly bullish. This week, all the broad market ETFs had very high activity. Three of them, SPY, DIA and IWM made new all-time highs. QQQ is the only one that could not make new all-time high. However, on Friday, QQQ also bounced up from memory support and created a bullish shape candle. After market close on Friday, US Senate passed legislation on the new tax reform it is expected to move the market higher. However, we will only trade based on what we see happening in the market next week. Overall, the market continues to be clearly bullish. Our sector performance study comprises of 11 economic sectors. We study them over three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week, green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together these three bars represent four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero level indicates the sector went up and if the bar goes to the left of the zero level, 
it shows the sector went down. This week, 9 of the 11 sectors gained and only 2 declined. This shows overall bullishness of the market. Telecom services is the biggest gainer by far. As seen from previous recent market roundups through this weekly analysis, you could catch the exact turning point in telecom sector and probably buy some telecom stocks at the very bottom. Consumer staples and consumer discretionary. These two sectors are up for all the three review periods, that is they are up for one month now. You could catch the exact bottom of these sectors based on the analysis in these market roundups or using QH yourself. Information technology is the worst performing sector this week. It went down. In recent market roundups, I had warned against taking new buy positions in this sector. This caution was based on QH sector industry analysis that shows sector industry rotation in real time. By using this analysis, you could stand aside from taking new information technology sector buy positions and thereby protect your capital. We are now studying the best performing industries of this week. Five of the best performers belong to consumer discretionary sector. Using QH, you could catch the exact turning point of this sector. This sector was languishing for many months and only recently it started to go up. The turning point was visible in QH ranking and heat map table that shows sector industry rotation in real time. The five industries belonging to consumer discretionary sector that went up this way are department stores, houseware and specialties, home furnishing retail, apparel retail and advertising. Department store is the biggest gainer. In this industry, Macy's M went up beautifully after giving a textbook box long trade setup at pendulum low that is at a very low price level on 9th November. This was also a scenario of false downside breakout in both weekly and daily at Q watermark support levels. It went up by 14.8% this week. Macy's was optimally valued as seen from Q Vital. This is the chart of Macy's ticker symbol M using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily pop on template on the right hand side. In the weekly chart, Macy's displayed a bullish headwind signal and then went up for several weeks. It then came down, tried to go below the watermark support level that was created by the bullish headwind but reversed and went back above the watermark support level. At the same time, it displayed heavy activity which pointed to possible exhaustion of sellers. While this false downside breakout took place in the weekly chart, there was also a false downside breakout in the daily chart. On this hand candle, Macy's displayed a bull release signal, the cyan up arrow and on that day it closed just above the watermark support level, thereby completing a false 
downside breakout. It was accompanied by heavy activity. That gave us a box long trade setup with stop just below recent low and partial profit could be booked once the risk distance was covered. At the right edge, Macy's went up and hit the memory resistance level. Swing traders might book full profit. We can see that the memory resistance is existing in the weekly chart as well. Longer term investors may hold on to partial position using stop loss that is decided by the Q protection signal and holding the remaining position in such a way that the entire trade is risk free from now onward. Another stock calls KSS also in department stores industry went up by 6.5% this week. It had displayed a textbook bounce long trade setup on 9th November. KSS was also optimally valued. You could check that out using Q Vital Fundamental Analyst. This is the chart of calls using daily hop on template. Calls tried to hit this memory support line multiple times. One time it tried to hit it and went up from there. Second time tried to go below it and again went up. This is the third time it touched the same memory and went up from there. On this day, that is 9th November, for the fourth time, price tried to go down, precisely hit the memory and went up from there. It ended the day with heavy activity and closing was above previous day's close. That met all the requirements of a bounce long trade setup. A long position could be taken at the close of this day just before market close with stop below recent low and profit target could be set at a level where risk distance was covered probably at this watermark resistance level. Cases went and hit the watermark resistance at least partial profit could be booked at that time and remaining position could be held. At the right edge, it has hit the next resistance that is the memory resistance. These are intelligent trend lines that are drawn automatically and may come from few days back to few years back. This memory resistance for example is coming from far far away. Price tried to go above the memory resistance on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday but couldn't go above it. Looking at that a swing trader could book the remaining position in call on Thursday or Friday. Longer term investors may continue to hold partial position and use stop loss in such a way that the entire trade is risk free from now onward. We are now starting the worst performing industries of this week. Eight of the 10 worst performing industries belong to information technology sector. In recent market roundups, I had mentioned that this was not the time to take new buy position in this sector. You could also arrive at the same conclusion yourself using QH sector industry rotation analysis. That analysis was done in a timely fashion 
this week many of the information technology sector industries decline three of them are related to semiconductors semiconductor equipment semiconductors and semiconductor equipment and semiconductors the worst performing industry is semiconductor equipment using QH and drilling down to stocks you could actually take a shot on Varsam materials ticker symbol VSM on 9th November I had shared this trade setup in Q traders community in the post is this the beginning of drop of the semiconductor company that trade caught the very top of the stock with a profitable short trade at that time the stock was overvalued you could check it out using q vital fundamental analyst this weakness in terms of valuation gave additional confidence to short the stock and you could short it using q systems well before others became aware of semiconductor stocks decline this is the posting in our traders community on the stock vsm when i shared the trade idea at that time semiconductor equipment industry started to turn magenta over five days period that is our primary period for deciding whether to take a long or short entry magenta indicates weak or bearish industry and cyan indicates strong or bullish industry semiconductor equipment clearly was strong or bullish for many months but was starting to turn weak or bearish over five days period looking at that i drilled down into few stocks vsm was one of them i did a pr analysis industry pr analysis on vsm by looking at the color coding you could instantly see that vsm was overvalued both in terms of relative valuation as well as internal valuation magenta color indicates that it was overvalued growth information was also not available or weak relative to these peer stocks when i shared the trade idea q at a glance charts looked like this in the weekly chart vsm had bearish that is magenta backdrop candle color it had displayed a bear release signal this down arrow in the daily chart it had displayed a bearish headwind earlier price tried to go above that on this magenta candle it displayed a second bearish headwind price came down sharply and closed below the watermark resistance created by the first bearish headwind that completed a false upside breakout and this magenta color candle was the signal day for a false upside breakout short trade as well as a bearish headwind short trade this drop was also on high activity showing that many big players were starting to sell the stock this is a view of vsm a few days after entry the short trade could be taken using put options as the stock was at a very high level when the stock dropped 
the put option gained because of delta as well as for volatility increase. Just in few days, the put options trade gave about 100% profit. This was on 15th November, meaning that the 100% profit was achieved in about one week. You may look up VSM as of this week and see that the stock is continuing to fall further. Following Q disciplined way, partial position could be booked before and partial position could still be held now. Every week, other than the best and worst performing industries, we also study the industries that are going up with fast pace. These often end up being the best performing industries in subsequent weeks. These are the 10 industries that went up with fast pace this week. Cable and satellite industry is one of them. This industry is of special interest as it was weak for long time. Because it was weak for long time and now starting to show signs of strength, it may give bottom catching opportunities. You may drill down using QH to find potential bottom catching opportunities. Liberty Global LBTYA is the ticker symbol may give such an opportunity next week. Let's study it in more detail. This is the QH industry analysis. I have sorted the industries using the PACE column. Cable and satellite is one that was weak magenta for many months, these are the monthly review periods and over 5 days that is the primary period for deciding trade entry, cable and satellite has turned cyan. Therefore, this industry turning from weakness to strength could give us bottom catching opportunities. If you used QH and click this get components button, you could drill down to the stocks of the industry. A vital statistics study of the stocks belonging to cable and satellite instantly showed the stock LBTYA that is Liberty Global has a relative valuation score that is optimally valued. We know that instantly from the cyan color. It is also not far from 52 week low. Only 12% above 52 week low. I looked at the Liberty Global charts using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side, daily hop on template on the right hand side. Liberty Global is being nicely supported in the weekly chart by this memory support line. It displayed a bullish headwind signal here and from there price went up beautifully tried to come down and bounced up again from the memory support. In the daily chart, a bullish headwind came on this candle and that also very nicely caught the very bottom of the stock. At the right edge this way, 
Liberty Global created a higher high on the cyan candle that was on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday pulled back somewhat. Friday's candle closed above the yellow direction line. If it goes up next week, it may give us a low risk go with flow trend following long trade opportunity. Lastly, we study the industries going down with fast pace. They often end up being the worst performers in subsequent weeks. Internet and direct marketing retail industry was strong for a long time and now declined with fast pace. This is the industry. Overstock OSTK in this industry declined by more than 33% this week. Earlier OSTK was going up rapidly. You could have a long position in the stock. However, there were recent warning signs. It had created a false upside breakout on 29th November on Q charts. The stock was overvalued and had poor growth relative to its peers as shown by Q Vital Fundamental Analyst. These were enough reasons to be cautious in this stock. Looking at these warning signs, you could use Q protection signal to apply stop loss and thereby protect your profit and capital. CTRIP C -T -R -P, is another stock in the same internet and direct marketing retail industry. Bearish headwind signal in Q daily chart on 31st July beautifully caught the very top of Citri. This headwind signal often foretells a reversal as it did again in this case. Let's have a look at CTRP using Q charts. This is Citri using Q hop on template. This is the bearish headwind, the magenta dot on top of this yellow candle that caught the very top of C-trip. Since then, price could never go back to the high created by the bearish headwind. It continues to go down at the right edge of the chart. Yet another stock, Netflix, in the same internet and direct marketing retail industry displayed bearish headwind on 17th October. This also caught the very top of the stock. Yet another example of the effectiveness of the headwind signal. This is Netflix using Q hop on template. On this day during earnings it created a bearish shape candle. The candle had long upper tail. It also displayed a bearish headwind. Since then, price could never go above the high created by the bearish headwind. At the right edge, it is gradually coming down and it is underperforming the market. We can see that from the relative performance line this white line that is tilting downward. Both C-Trip and Netflix were overvalued. You could check that out from Q Vital because they displayed bearish headwind signals and they were overvalued. You could protect profit in any existing long position using Q protection stop loss and you could even consider taking short trades. Both of those short trades would end up being very profitable as both the stocks, Citrip and Netflix, 
fell down after they displayed very shaped there may be other overvalued stocks in this internet and direct marketing retail industry as well as the other industries like healthcare technology agricultural and farm machinery diversified metals and mining some building etc all these industries declined with fast pace and it is time to be cautious about these stocks in final summary the broad market continues to be bullish after quite a few weeks this week showed very high activity across the board for all the four broad market ETFs. As the market continues to go up for any long position that you may be holding, it is not required to exit them. Instead, it may be wiser to try to let profit run. As the market continues to be bullish, it is not time to start shorting stock across the board. There are some industries that are showing weakness like the semiconductor industries. If you are holding long position in them, you may book profit or at minimum use Q protection signal to apply stop loss. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.